Our scripture reading today is selected passages through the book of John that highlight the Apostle Andrew. The next day, John was there again with his two disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Jesus said, You come and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard that John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and to tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ, and he brought Simon to Jesus. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked only to test him, for he had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small, lo five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida and Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went in turn to tell Jesus. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, be with us this day. May we hear your word preached, and may we have the courage to take your words and put them into practice, now and always. Amen. Being that today is Kirkin Sunday, Scottish Sunday, as you have it, this is one of the only times I can start my sermon by saying, an Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scotsman were captured while fighting in a far-off foreign land. The leader of the captor said, we are going to line you up in front of a firing squad and shoot you all in turn. But first you can all make one final request. The Englishman said, I would like to hear God save the queen. Just one more time to remind me of that old country and of my heritage. I would like it played by the London All Boys Choir with Morris dancers dancing the tune in the background. The Irishman said, I would like to hear Danny Boy play just one more time to remind me of the old country, sung in the style of Daniel O'Donnell with river dance performing the tune. The Scotsman said, I would like to be shot first. <laughs> Today is the Sunday where we celebrate our Scottish ancestry. I think a great way to do that this morning is to take a glimpse into the life of the Apostle Andrew. After all, he is the patron saint of Scotland. In the Gospel of John, Andrew is mentioned three times, and there are many stories and legends and myths about St. Andrew. He is not only the patron saint of Scotland, but of Russia and of Greece as well. There's not a whole lot of direct information about Andrew in the New Testament, but the information that we do have paints a very vivid and unmistakable picture of the kind of man that Andrew was. He was a native of Bethsaida. Andrew was a fisherman by trade. He began his discipleship by being a follower of John the Baptist. He is also credited with being the first, along with John, to attach himself to Jesus. And in that scripture reading, no sooner did Andrew discover Jesus, and the first thing he did was to run and tell his brother Peter. Most of us are familiar with Peter and his undisputed leadership among the apostles. It was Peter, James, and John that formed the inner circle. In the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, when Jesus calls together his disciples, Andrew is not even mentioned by name, only referred to as Peter's brother. And this brings up our first quality of Andrew. There was a graciousness 
about him. Andrew was one of the first to attach himself to Jesus. He was the one who brought Peter to Jesus, and yet he was not among the inner circle. And in other Gospels, he is not even mentioned by name. Andrew must have been one of those rare people who lived his life by being gracious. It, it didn't matter who was given the credit. It didn't matter how things unfolded. It didn't matter whether his name was even mentioned. For this man, it only mattered that the work of Christ was being done. That's what we see in the three stories where we know about him. He was always doing the work of Christ. The second quality of Andrew is his tenacity, and I mean this as a compliment. He was tenacious or stubborn, if you prefer, but in a very constructive manner. In the book of John, we learn of that famous story, the feeding of the 5,000. In fact, this is the only miracle story that appears in all four Gospels. And in the Gospel of John, it is only in that account that we hear of Andrew and he mentions to Jesus the, the wee lad who brings his loaves and fishes to share with everyone. D did you see what I did there? If this wasn't Kirk and Sunday, I would have said little boy. But being that it's Scottish, I said wee lad. Did you get that? It, I, I want you to feel the Scottishness today. It's just, it's just coming out everywhere we can, we can send it. An extremely large crowd had gathered to hear Jesus as he spent most of the day preaching and teaching to them, and as the day wore on, they had a problem. They had all these people here, they were hungry, and they needed to feed them. Jesus said to his disciples, feed them. And at this point, I'm sure the 11 began to argue, complain, to point fingers, to tell everyone else to do it. However, Andrew saw this as a challenge, an opportunity to help and serve. He went into the crowd looking for a solution to his problem. It was Andrew that brought the boy who was willing to sacrifice his lunch. Andrew knew in his heart that Jesus could make an impossible situation possible. He had this tenacious spirit that saw challenges as opportunities to bring others to Christ. In Andrew, we see not only tenacity, but also a spirit of optimism and enthusiasm. The third quality of Andrew appears in the 12th chapter of John. There was an incident in which some Greeks approached the Apostle Philip, and they wanted to see Jesus. It was unnatural for a Jewish person to think that anyone other than their race could possibly be of any use to God. To the Orthodox Jewish individuals, Gentiles, Gentiles were accursed. When these foreigners came to Philip, he knew exactly what to do. He ran and found Andrew. And Andrew believed that the gospel, he must have believed that the example of Jesus was for everyone because he possessed that quality of acceptance. Andrew knew that Jesus well enough to know that there is no one that Jesus would not see and there was no time that Jesus would not give to anyone seeking the truth. Andrew not only accepted others, he treated them with respect and kindness. Now in these brief stories of scripture, we see that Andrew teaches us about several very important attributes that we need to live out our faith. In him we see graciousness and humility. The important thing for us to remember that we should always be doing the work of Christ. Andrew also shows us in a good way the tenacious spirit. When an unsurmountable challenge presented itself, no panic. Instead, he did his best and he put the rest in God's hands. And Andrew shows us acceptance. He believed that message of Jesus was for everyone and he had the courage to act out that belief. It is so easy to judge someone for their beliefs. It is quite another to accept someone as God's children. And for us living in this world today, we learn a vital lesson today. We learn as we go through on our own faith journey, we learn to be gracious. We learn to be committed. We learn to be accepting. Andrew was an individual, let's do this. 
everybody likes it when I come away, so I wish you would like it if I would go away, but that's, that's a story. I'll, I'll take this one better. Uh, today we're learning about Andrew. And we, le we have learned in scripture what he was like, how we too can be gracious and committed and accepting. Andrew was not only mentioned in scripture, there's, there's a legend, there's a myth, there's stories that have circulated for thousands of years about this man and what he gave. He, the legends have it, the myth has it, that he went to a part of Scythia where all the barbarians lived, and he ministered and preached the gospel to them with that tenacious spirit that he had. And he was able to convert and and change a lot of this barbarous people. He was in the land that is now known as modern day Russia. And so Russia also claims Andrew as their patron saint. So does Greece. The myth or the legend or the theory is, is that he went to Patras in Greece where Aegeus was the governor. And Aegeus was anything but a Christian man or leader. But his wife, I believe it was Maximilia, got deathly sick. And Andrew went and healed her. And when he healed her, she became a Christian and converted to Christianity. And if that wasn't enough for the governor, the governor had a brother who also was sick. And Andrew went and healed him. And because of that, that man also gave his life to Christ and to being a Christian. And the governor was furious that this was done. And he ordered that Andrew would be uh, crucified for these actions. And Andrew, with his gracious, accepting, tenacious spirit, asked to be crucified on a cross shaped like an X because he was not worthy to be crucified in the same way as his Lord. And he was martyred in Greece on an X shaped cross. And that's why he is also the patron saint of Greece. And there's a third country, or should I say the best country, that he is also attached to as their patron saint is Scotland. And again, again the myth goes, let's see if I can get this right. Uh, there was a man named Regalius, a bishop. There we go. There was a man named Regalius, a bishop, who ordered Constan, who ordered, who took Andrew's, in a dream he was ordered to take parts of Andrew's body from the coffin and he was told in the dream to go west and he went west and he went west and he finally landed on the east part of Scotland which is now where St. Andrew's sits uh, today and then several years later there was a king who was going in a Scottish king who was going into battle against the English and he had a dream that Andrew the Apostle came to him and guaranteed him victory in this battle. And, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of heads nod. I'm reliving the myth. I know that this is just a legend and, and this may go a little bit one way or another, uh, but the, the legend is that in the dream, he was assured victory. And when they went to fight the English above the Scottish army in the sky was that cross, that St. Andrew's cross terrified their enemies to death and they were able to win that battle and secure victory and they made Andrew their patron saint. That's where we get the St. Andrew's cross from. The cross of Andrew against the blue sky of, of Scotland in that battle and that becomes our national flag of Scotland. So this man lived his life and did everything he could to show that graciousness, that acceptance, that spirit, that tenacious spirit. And not only did he did that, he did that in every day, in every walk, in every aspect of his life. He was that example. Now let, give you, let me give you a story of a man who is not that example, just so we can see the contrast between the two. There was a man who went to church every Sunday. He considered himself to be a wonderful Christian man. One day he wakes up and he sees on this Sunday morning that it's a beautiful day out and he decides he's not going to go to church today. He doesn't need to. He's there all the time. He's going to go hiking instead. So the man goes out in the mountains. He blows off church. This could be another point for all of you on another day. <laughs> but he blows off church. 
He goes in the hike. He's having a wonderful time with nature, fueling nature around him. He comes round the corner on his hike, and about 15 yards away is a tall, angry, hungry-looking bear. And the man is petrified. And he does what most of us do in that situation of fear and trembling and panic. He gets on his knees and he prays to God. The guilt is setting in because he missed church. And he prays to God to deliver him safely from this situation. He prays that the bear would turn around and go the other way. And he opens his eyes and the bear is still coming towards him. So he gets down on his knees again, feeling the guilt prays to God, apologizes for not being in church, and says, if, if you're not going to take this bear away, if I have to face this bear, could you at least make it a Christian bear? That would help me. And he opens the eyes, and he sees the bear doing this, and he hears the bear say, gracious God, for the meal I am about to receive. We, we all do that. We get in moments of panic we get in moments of guilt and we run to our God and the ironic thing is God is always there. Our patron saint of Scotland knew this in the way that he lived his life. He was always gracious, always had that fighting spirit and is always accepting of his God and he lived his life showing God to everyone in that manner. Let us have the courage of this and each day to do the same. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us. Give us the courage to act and to believe and to do, now and always.